Colleges were among the first to close down this spring, and now, whether their classes are online or in person, many college students are packing up and getting ready to move to campus. Our Nine Health expert, Dr. Pyle Coley, joins us now to talk about those college kids. Dr. Coley, this is part of our three-part series on how to get kids safely back to school. So. I think there are many things, but what would you say is the biggest challenge with respect to the pandemic and college age kids? So Kim, with elementary school kids, we talked about teaching them how to be safe. With middle and high school kids, it was really about teaching them why they need to follow the rules and comply with them. With college age kids, the biggest concern with respect to the pandemic, in my opinion, is the number of exposures that they have and really trying to limit that. If you think about an average college student's life, they live in a dorm, they go to a lecture where lots of people come from different parts of the community, they have recreation in the rec center or in the dining halls to eat dinner, they go out to bars and restaurants. All of these places during a pandemic are potentially high risk because you can imagine that an average college student has several fold more contacts during a day than you or me or any other average adult might have. Yeah, and the problem is uh, we're not there. We're not there to say that's not a good idea. Uh, so when we talk about this right. and these frequent exposures, that comes uh, with, brings up the question of testing. Um, is this a strategy? I mean, and, and how often could they possibly be tested if it's available? It, you know, it's a great strategy, but I, I do appreciate that caveat that you put there, if it's available and if it comes back relatively quickly. But we need to educate and empower our college students to be proactive about testing. So in my personal opinion, I wish more colleges would do pool testing every week on their, you know, on their students and their communities because that would be a good way to bring classes back safely. But very few campuses have actually employed this policy at this point. So it becomes the responsibility of the individual to really, you know, go out and seek the testing. So I would recommend the average college student have testing at least once a month and more common under certain circumstances. So they should go um, if they have had exposure to somebody who potentially has COVID or has, is suspected to have COVID. If they're exposed to somebody outside of their usual routine or bubble. So if they go to a party or go to an event where they've been exposed to people that they don't normally see. And then finally, before they ex you know, have contact with a high risk individual such as a grandparent or a parent. Yeah, and you think about that, many are coming home like Thanksgiving break and many schools don't go back, so it's a good idea to do that test. How about advice for the fact that they are going to these common places? They're going to be going to a dining, dining hall, potentially, well, definitely some classes, maybe not the big lecture halls, but that rec center. Um, what, what should we tell them to do besides wash your hands? <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that's a tough one, but you do know that these types of indoor places, because of the fact that they're indoor, do pose higher risk. So I think as a parent, you educate your child about how the virus is transmitted and strategies like sitting close to the window, for example, if you're, you know, going to some sort of a dining hall because there might be more ventilation there, checking in with the rec center and seeing what type of air purifiers they're having, or going to the rec center that's built more recently because their ventilation system might be more up to date. Uh, if they're gonna live in a dorm, elect to have a single room rather than having a roommate so that you have less contact. Uh, really isolate those people living on the same suite so you're not having people from other areas using your kitchen or using your bathrooms. So empowering your child, I think, to understand how the virus is spread and that their main risk comes through the exposure to the contacts. So if they minimize the contacts, they minimize their risk. Thank you, Dr. Coley. We gotta have a little faith in them. Sometimes we wonder how well we did, but we're gonna send them off and hope they have a good time. Thanks again. And if no, you missed he's any of our great interviews. Proud. Trust me. <laughs> okay, well. I've been giving him hand sanitizer since he was like two when you play on those group places because I was always like, oh, quickly, because <laughs> I'm a little anal about that stuff. Sorry. <laughs> All right. Thank you. So if you missed any of Dr. Coley's interview, she had some great advice for all of our kids at all ages on Back to School. You can find them all on the Nine News website because every single age 
has an issue. So we so appreciate her advice. And speaking of going back to school, whether your kids are going back into a classroom or they're doing the remote learning, they still need stuff and it's not cheap. So back to school costs a lot. That's why Nine News has partnered with the Denver Broncos, King Supers, and the Volunteers of America to host the Back to Learning Supply Drive. You can help families in need by donating at the website on our screen or make donations at a King Supers register. We'll be right back.